Hello everyone and welcome back to D3 in 10 minutes or less. My name is Jasper and today we are going to talk about joins. This is the most crucial part of D3. I know I said scales are my favorite, joins are the most crucial part. Uh, this is what took me the longest time to learn and this is the biggest ramp to get over before you can start really drawing things within D3. Uh, there used to be a much more uh, confusing process to get circles or bars or lines on a line chart or on any chart for that matter. Uh, now it's a lot more straightforward. So I'm gonna show you the super simple path as well as how to do some more advanced things that actually touch into animation. Um, so with that, let's get into it. Bibbidi bobbidi boop, D3 in 10 minutes or less. Okay, cool. So there's our timer. We now have nine minutes to go over this. So you can see here, we're, just make sure it's still showing, there we go. You can see this is where we left off last time. Uh, so we have this awesome scatter plot showing, okay, this is where we are at in 2018 for GDP versus CO2 emissions per capita. That's great. Uh, if we crack this sucker open, you can see here that we're just doing something very simple to get the circles to draw uh, within in the chart. So. We're selecting the data object, which is an iterable. In this instance, it's an array. And we're saying for every item in this array, I want you to join it with a circle. And for each of those circles, I want you to pass through these attributes. So give it a fill opacity of 0.4. Use this function to calculate the radius for this specific object. This function to calculate the X of the center and the Y of the center. See X and Y. Uh, to calculate the stroke and the fill. So this, all, this is all using the scales we went over last time. Uh, this iterates through each object in data, each item in the data array, and uh, does these calculations for it. And all you have to do now is just do dot join circle. Fantastic, that's great. You can see I've got some stuff commented out here, and that's, this, is where we're gonna, uh, this is where we're gonna have some fun. Uh, so what there was before there was join was the enter update remove pattern and that's something that gave a lot of people a lot of headaches and heartaches a while back but we're going to go through it so that you can use this to get really into that nitty-gritty sort of the power of d3s and that nitty-gritty detail manipulation uh, so that's what we're going to dive into here so let's comment this out just get rid of it we're also going to comment out where we're going to get rid of all of these attributes, I believe, except for stroke and fill. Okay, delete there. So in place of just saying join circles, what we're going to do is specify within that join method what to do within each with each within each action. So we have enter, update, and exit. So enter is when a new item gets added to the data set. So if you're thinking about a filtered data set that starts off with uh, 10 objects and then there's an 11th object. So in this instance, if we have 10 countries and then we have it filtered and then all of a sudden 11 countries show up, this is what we want D3 to do with that 11th country when it's entered the data set. Uh, for update, this is when the object within the data set has been updated. So again, we're looking at these values over years. So as the GDP per capita changes, we want to say, hey, make this change when the data updates. Then exit is when it falls out. So if a country is removed, um, this is just how we want to handle the data. So I'll just walk through this, make a couple important callouts. Uh, so enter append, that's, that's the classic old school D3. This is what join has become, or this is what join was before it was joined. Enter append became join. So when a, when a data piece enters, we want to append a circle for it and we want to pass these attributes, the radius, uh, the X of the center and the Y of the center. And then we wanna call in this transition object. And what this does is this says anything after transition, I want you to sort of ease in. Uh, you can use, there's all sorts of D3 animation um, things you, you can call. So you have ease in, ease out, all, all these sorts of things. I'll provide a link to that. Um, so anything after transition will be, will follow that transition uh, method. So we have fill opacity. So this means when we add something, it's gonna to transition to the fill opacity going to 0.4 from zero. 
when things change, you can see we've got transition at the top of it, which means that as soon as something changes, uh, it's going to start to move things as opposed to just shifting it. So you'll see what happens. I'll, I'll show you what happens when we have transition in different locations. If we have it at the start, everything after it gets uh, called according to the transition. If you have transition after any of these, it'll just jump from one to the next. Uh, so for that, we're calling size and position because those are the things that change over time. Um, then we call selection at the end just to make sure it actually makes the selection. And then exit, we're just saying make them disappear, right? Radius of zero. So they're disappearing, but then we're also actually removing them. What we could do is add a transition in there, but that makes it seem like the population's dying off, which who knows, it might. Uh, but let's see, there's that. And for anything you don't want to change throughout the entire process, you call it after this join method. So if you recall before, this was just circles and now we have all of this and then we were calling the attributes. So the stroke and the fill, um, those are just the colors based off the continent of the country. So that stays consistent throughout. Uh, okay, so let's see. So the other thing we're doing is because this is an animation that we're showing over time, there's a process that you can do to basically call, call a tick. So we're saying um, that here we, we want to basically set a tick. So think of like the tick of a clock every uh, 100 milliseconds. So every 10th of a second, we want to see the data change. Uh, we can mess around with this to see how it transitions over time. Um, so this wall true, you can see this bracket here encompasses all of that. So here's where we're saying what the transition is. So it's taking a quarter of a second right now. We could make this longer or shorter if we want. This is also where we would call the ease if we wanted to. Uh, here's a little calculation we're doing to change what the selected year is. So we're starting at the selected year of 1800. We're saying as long as it's less than or equal to 2018, add one. If it's let, if it is greater than 2018, change it back to 1800. So this should cycle through. So let's see if I've commented in and out all the right things. So let's see, let's press play and see what happens. There we go. So you can see the circles are moving and you can see how they're moving. It's it's an actual shift as opposed to just popping and locking and just sort of going bit, boop, bit, boop, bit, boop. So you can see things are progressing. Up top, the reason that's happening is because we have a logarithmic scale. So I can actually change that. But yeah, let's see, there we go. 2018, done. Cool. So what we can do here is let's just mess around with this a bit just so you can. Oh, hey, Lola. Uh, this is my cat, Lola. Hello. So if I was to put transition here, let's just see what this does to the data set. See, it's a lot jumpier because what's actually happening is it's redrawing this every frame. So they're not moving per se. They're just getting redrawn. So if you're trying, if you have an animation in a data visualization, it's usually because you want to convey the change over time. If you have it jumpy like this, that creates a little bit of a gap for the people consuming your data. They're wondering, wait, why is this slow? They're used to the web where stuff is smooth and beautiful. So if you can make your data visualization smooth and beautiful in the same way, it makes it easier for people to understand, which lets them get to the actual data sooner. The state is saying, is that there is a strong linear, there's a strong correlation between in these two different metrics. And it's also, you can see the countries are shifting up and to the right, They're all shifting up and to the right. So if we go back here, let's just do one last thing just to show it. There we go, transition there. And let's add a transition in for the radius on disappear, just so we can see how that, how that looks. Exit. There we go. Play. All right. So again, nice and smooth. And you see as countries fall off, they, they actually disappear. There we go. Bippy boppy boop. This looks great. Okay, cool. Well, that's that. That was 10 quick minutes showing the most important part of D3, which is that enter, update, remove, or enter, update, exit uh, design. Uh, how you can avoid that entirely just by saying join and then the type of SVG element you want to do, whether it's circle or bar or path. 
Uh, there's a lot more to this. So if you have more questions, feel free to call them out. Uh, we can go deeper on this in future episodes. Uh, yeah. Hope you had a great time with this. I know I had a great time doing this. Time always flies during these videos because I'm enjoying it. So apologies if I go over by a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's that. Thanks a lot. Talk to you soon.